What is going on, everybody? It's Alex coming back to another video. And today, we are doing round two of the emergency mock draft. Obviously, we're going to be doing round three possibly tomorrow. But if you guys just want to keep it round two, let me know down in the comment section because this is not planned whatsoever. But we're going to have some fun with it. So starting off with the number 33 pick, we had the Bucks who swapped with the number 32 pick with the Jaguars. And to be honest, there's um there's really two ways I can rock here. I'm looking, I, I could probably see three. I want to eventually replace JPP, right? So we could look at an edge player still. We could look at Aziz Ojolari. Uh, I think that that's a Shaq Barrett role. We already have signed him to a long-term contract. Dylan Phillips would probably take the similar role, but he does play really well with his hand in the ground. I would look at Jason Owe here, and I mean, he's up towards 260. Um, Jalen Phillips might be, I mean, he's the exact same weight pretty much. But Jason Owe and Jalen Phillips, I think they can both play that JPP role. If we want to check what Jason Pierre-Paul, um, well, we'll see what his weight is. We'll see. Uh, he's about 278. So we're losing about 20 pounds of presence there. So maybe let's get off that train. But I still think a Jason Owe would be an interesting target to get. To me, actually, it's pretty much down to just Christian Barmore. The idea that we're going to be keeping Dominican Sue for a very long period of time probably isn't in the books we're going to be really trying to run it up and christian barmore he's the only guy who could potentially go in the first round he's obviously interior defensive lineman number one and i think it's a good spot for him you know we don't need a running back anymore because we already brought back our leonard fournette and again we don't need three if not four running backs you want to count Keyshawn vaughn from i believe round two or three last year we don't need three running backs or four in that backfield it's just you don't need it it's a little bit too many cooks in the kitchen so get Christian Barmore, who could actually make a good impact in case Dominican Sue or Vita Vea gets injured. That's a pretty damn good backup there. So next with the Jets, I mean, also, if you guys want to look at Christian Barmore's weight, he is 310. So if you really needed to, you could stick him um, at the end spot and just like go fucking ham. But uh, at the Jets spot, this is, to me has to probably we could get another edge here. Slot corner still is an issue. We could get Aaron Robinson even here. I know they run, I'm pretty sure that they're running this Robert Sala cover three. So I'd be looking more for an Elijah Molden fit. Um, Aaron Robinson, again, would also fit this scheme. But maybe we don't need to do that this pick. Given the fact that you still have Sean Wade on the board, I uh, probably could get Elijah Molden or Wade in the third round. I'd be looking more towards the second edge route, especially after we pretty much flipped scheme and went um, straight on for pretty much getting, um, we, we pretty much lost like Jordan Jenkins and a bunch of other for uh, a bunch of other three, four outside linebackers. And unfortunately, that pretty much is what's left on the board. So uh, it's it's a weird idea, but we might as well just like swing for the fences. Again, I always say this. I actually say this quite often. I tweeted about it today, a link in the description. When on earth has playing it safe actually really paid off for a franchise? I mean, obviously going for a stupid pick, like um, I was referencing jo uh, Joe Burrow versus uh, Jordan Love. It's like Jordan Love had the higher ceiling, but he, it was ridiculous. You obviously knew that he probably was not going to be anywhere close to Joe Burrow. But I'm talking about like, I'm talking about like, let's just say a Jason Owe versus um, a Ronnie Perkins or like a Joseph Asai. It's like, Hmm, maybe, maybe they're like, like if we go for, um, actually all these guys are really fucking good. Um, let's just say Jalen Phillips, who's actually a pretty safe bet, but he has injury concerns. So, I mean, you'll probably get a potentially higher upside out of a way than Phillips, but at the same time, Phillips is a better player. The real idea, the real question is, can we trust a Jalen? Can we trust him to stay healthy? To me, no. But it is the second round, and I do have him as a top 15 talent. I think he's better than Mac Jones. Uh, I think he's better than Devontae Smith, arguably, uh, when you factor in weight and size and stuff. I think he's better than uh, Quiddy Pay. That, that's actually a pretty bold statement by me. Uh, that's me coming from a Quiddy Pay lover. Better than Tevin Jenkins, better than Newsom. So I believe that he's at least up in here in, for, in terms of talent. Maybe top 15 would be a better estimate. But second round is right where you should take Jalen. I think he could fit in that 4-3. Again, Jason Away also played in the 4-3. Uh, we, we do have already an explosive guy who can make like an impact. So maybe Jason Away would be too many cooks in the kitchen or maybe one, two, uh, kind of just like the same type of style as a Lawson. So I'm going to go Jalen Phillips here. I think I did it in my last draft as well. Big fan of it. And that leaves, oh my God. I mean, we're down to Nick Bolton, Aziz Ojolari for the Falcons, but 
I mean, that's unreal value right there. Get Aziz Ojolari. I usually trade up for him in the first, but some teams are actually pretty high on him. So that's just uh, that's definitely something to watch out for. Away is going to be a, definitely an interesting project. But when we look at the Dolphins here, uh, we could go linebacker we want to. I know they brought on a couple dudes for like one year contracts, but I mean, let's just check out what they did in free agency. That's my best part of this. We actually get to make sure that we're doing the right move. Um, yeah, they brought on Bernardrick, McQu- Bernardrick McKinney uh, in terms of for a swap of Sha- uh, Shaq Lawson. Having a hard time, but I mean, really, these guys, Atlanta Roberts and Brennan Scarlett, are not going to make a big impact on the team. And again, Bernardrick McKinney, you know, he's not going to be the greatest signing in the world that there's a whole entire reason why the um excuse me nick casario pretty much outed every single one of their linebackers so when we look at it we have to either go edge or we have to go linebacker here and nick bolton definitely somebody i would have looked at jalen phillips here gonna be honest but we did lose some explosiveness so i'm looking at joe tryon here i'm looking at jason owe and to keep it realistic with what the nfl likes jason owe did run insane numbers so it hurts me because I don't really want to do that, but we do want to get some upside here. Uh, we could go Quincy Roche later on, but we still probably need a secondary edge. Like you look at Jason Owe, he's young. He didn't get a sack, but he does have potential. And this is probably the best, one of the better teams for him to have potential on. We could trade back here though. You know, there are still guys like Najee Harris, Travis Etienne on the board where teams who probably want another running back. I could even look at the damn Broncos trying to get a running back right here. They could try to move up for him. So uh, I could even look at a team. You could say, you could say right here, the Jacks, they can go ETN. If you really want a dual headed threat right there, you can get ETN, but I don't think Oway is going to last that long. So we're going to get, we're going to get the pass rusher. You know, we're going to get Oway. I'm a fan of getting um, Quincy Roche later on, but you do need somebody who has potential to be a number one. And I think Quincy Roche is a good number two. Jason Oway has potential to develop. We were having a run on edges here, by the way. Uh, we're having a potential guy who could be a number one. So run on edges at the start. Defensive line has been the key to the start of this round. Uh, I was thinking about getting Elijah Moore there, by the way, as well. But I'm pretty sure we, we got it. We got it covered. We got it covered. We got Jamar Chase already. We don't need to get another weapon. Uh, with the Ravens on the board, I would look at another edge here too. They did just bring in Sammy Watkins, right? That is a one-year deal, however. So it's not something that's we're already guaranteed. We said we need to give Lamar weapons. And again, in the third round, we like to we're gonna put we have two picks this round. I think we're gonna be going after a guy uh, like Ronnie Perkins later on. We're not gonna go a fourth edge in a row. Uh, so we're gonna be actually looking at a guy like Terrace Marshall Jr. here. He's gonna work perfectly in this scheme, apart from the fact that he can't block. That that's a little bit annoying. But if you send him right down the field. He's he's great in the vertical game, has a really good catch radius. His highlights are better than most other wide receivers in this class. It's the consistency that's a problem. But on a team like the Ravens where there's a bunch of dogs, it might might just get him to that level. And Sammy Watkins would be a great mentor. I mean, like, look at him. He's a true junior, man. He's super young. Like, we forget how, how talented Terrace Marshall could be for his age. So still get him here. I know that it, it's a little bit after the fact uh, with, of course, losing out on being able to get Terrace starting right away. But he could start. I mean, Hollywood Brown, uh, you know, he's has his own role there. Devin DuVernay, I still think, can develop into an amazing weapon. You know, I don't – actually, Willie Sneed isn't even on the team anymore. So getting Terrace Marshall and as well as Sammy Watkins, that's a good move. That's a really good move. The Bengals on the board. Um, this could have been, this might've been Jason Oway. That was, that was like why I also didn't trade back. I felt Jason Oway would have been this pick. I will admit this as much as I want to go uh, Wyatt Davis at this spot. I'm a little bit sketched out and here's why we're getting another interior of offensive lineman from Ohio state. That's extremely developmental. I don't know if we need to spend more time developing linemen because of the fact that developing linemen aren't going to be as good as like day one impact linemen. I'm looking at a guy like Trey Smith who could probably be a better fit later on. This it's just, it's a little bit scary to me at this pick. I might honestly want to trade back a little bit. And there's a, there's a team that might want to be trading up. I mean, we could even see the Jaguars trying to move up for a running back right here. You guys would think it's insane, but I don't really want to put James Robinson through all the wear and tear. And, and if you could use an RBBC, that'd be pretty damn nice. Um, I'm, I still see Nick Bolton on the board guys. 
And to be honest, I might want to go try to snatch him up if I were the Broncos, who already traded up. But, I mean, that's – why not, right? Like, they're just going balls to the wall. They want to make sure everything is good this year. And to be honest, I think I might have done a similar trade. Not this one, but a similar trade in my last draft. So, I mean, it's a two-spot uh, one. So, we can see if a fifth rounder is able to push it through. I don't think you'd get – you'd garner any more than a fifth rounder in return. So, the Bengals declined it, which is a little bit unfortunate. We're going to trade a 2022 seventh round pick, just trying to finagle the system, try to make sure that the Bengals, um, I mean, the pick value is fine. So Nick Bolton here out of Missouri, that's a wonderful, wonderful pick. Vic Fangio is going to have the time of his life with that. And the Panthers on the board, you guys uh, got Mac Jones, good old Macintosh. And his name's actually not Mac. His his name is um, some, I think it's like Matthew McCorkle Jones, but you know, Good old Mac is definitely in need of some protection. So looking at the guys who are on the board, you got nothing right now. You got Brady Christensen, but I think that could be someone you trade up for later on. You know, you guys kind of saved your draft capital, so to speak, by not being able to trade up. We could look at a cornerback here as well. You know, you got guys like um, Elijah Molden who can play for you. If you have to Melifonwu, I think that Tyson Campbell has been hinted actually at even going before Eric Stokes in the draft. I think, again, scheme fit wise, there, there's some different... Uh, question marks with that it, it's a tough one we're honestly going to trade back here as well because i just i can't see taking one of these two guys leatherwood he had a really good pro day but again he's probably going to fit as a guard but you could use him as a tackle so it, it is possible for them to take him here but brady christensen is obviously the right option it's just we can't invest in brady christensen right now at this pick i think that if we're able to move back again there's still uh, Harris and ETN on the board, which again, I'm not going to be trading up with the Steelers all the way to trade up for Najee Harris. Just doesn't feel right for me to do that right now. Um, we could see the Steelers try to trade up for a guy like ETN, but we're seeing a, I'm going to, I'm going to put an interesting plot twist on this one. You guys aren't going to like this one. I want to see, I just want to make sure that the Jaguars, hey, you guys are going to hate this. I already know it. I love it though. I love the, I love the hate. Um, we're gonna see they got they got Carlos Hyde. Okay, then we're not gonna go running back then. Never mind. I was about to just pull the trigger. I forgot that they just brought in Carlos Hyde. So we're gonna see if there's a team that's willing to move up for a running back. I would have looked at the Broncos to potentially move up for ETN as well. Just these running backs are falling, man. We could see the cards try to move up for a guy like Travis ETN as well. Um shoot. I mean, this is a good time to trade back and acquire some draft capital, but Who's going to bite? That's the real question is who is going to bite? Because I can't see any of these teams wanting to just draft away and get get another running back on their roster. I mean, they got Jamal Williams. Uh, you already got Joe Mixon on a large contract. There, there's none of these teams are ready to be slotting in a dude. Obviously, you already got um, rotational players right there. I mean, even the Patriots. I, I don't think the Patriots would want to move up for ETN. So this is a really interesting spot, guys, because, I mean, I would think maybe, like, who, who could even use them? I mean, the Steelers are Steelers, and then you could even look at um, the Seahawks because they only have a two-year deal with Chris Carson, are the only teams I could really see moving up for a running back. You know, all these teams seem to have it pretty well fit. And to be honest, we, this actually doesn't seem like a bad move. The Bills might be moving up here for Najee. You know, uh, there there definitely is a chance that the Bills might want to move up that far because of the fact that, I mean, you don't have too many holes to fill anymore. And let's have a little bit of fun, yeah? Let's have a little bit of fun. The Bills are going to be making a monster trade to move up all this way. Um, again, the Panthers can re-move up for a Brady Christensen, but I don't think they're going to need to. We're going to see if – um so we can't trade up with just a two and a three. So we're going to try to two or three and then maybe a next year four. So that's going to be what it takes to move up, but – the Panthers need more picks. The um, the Bills need more power. So at this spot, we could even look at an edge player. But I'm looking at Najee Harris, and again, I, it kind of goes against what I've been saying about having a volume runner. But the running backs on the Bills haven't proven to me, like especially since Javante's off the board, they haven't proven enough to me to say, hey, we're not going to draft a high-end talent that can win us a Super Bowl right now with Najee Harris. To the point where it's like, oh, we need someone who could be an RBBC. Like, I think that those guys have their own roles. But Zach Moss, Devin Singletary, they haven't proven to be like running back one, one A. So, I mean, when you look at the Dolphins, 
you got running backs one and one a there already. You know, you got Salvian Ahmed there. That's a really good backup. You have Breda there who you guys signed and have a lot of faith in. Who's a really good player. And then not to mention, of course, the other Washington running back there. And you know, you guys, you're, that's perfect for a miles Gaskin, by the way, the name, uh, that's a perfect for an RBBC here. It's like, I don't think I'd put Devin Singletary and Zach Moss as certified starters. So they're good rotation dudes, but Najee Harris is perfect for this team. You got to get maybe one more edge player, 100% true. And we gave up that opportunity. But again, I seriously think this is a great fit. You guys want a power running game too. Najee Harris is your missing key. Again, look at the run, the edges. You can get a Peyton Turner down the board. You can get a Jordan Smith in the fourth. A Cam Sample. Patrick, jo- Patrick Jones to me seems like a bill, by the way. Like Ellerson Smith. All these dudes, that can fill your role. You got um, you got the kid out of Iowa last year in the second round. You have developmental players. Get your offense perfect. Najee Harris will make this offense perfect. Big fan of it. Next with the Bengals, uh, we got to go. This is where I'd feel more comfortable with getting an interior offensive lineman. We already just got – we traded back and we got some good value. We got like I think a fifth-round pick, and that's, that's good, especially for a team that has a lot of holes. I would look at this as a good spot to take somebody like that. Again, you guys know the depth at 4-3 defensive end. You already have Sam Hubbard as well. Getting Wyatt Davis there, it's a little bit sketchy, but he's developmental. And again, I don't think that we need to worry about Ohio State thinking Ohio State with um, Michael Jordan, okay? I think that we could be okay with it. I said okay like six times already. I know. We could feel comfortable with the idea that Wyatt Davis is a different person. Same scheme, different person, uh, developmental. Now you also got a fifth-round pick from the Broncos. That's going to help out with being able to get maybe another offensive lineman uh, that might even be more ready day one. You could look at a Kendrick Green. Some of you guys recommended that. David Moore. David Moore could possibly be a better starting day one guy than Wyatt Davis. But in the end, you can also you also should probably hit for the upside. You know, if you're in a division with the Steelers, the Ravens, and the Browns, who have all really good offensive lines, you need someone who can have the potential to actually block those dudes. So that's a big one for me. And the Lions. The Lions, I'd be looking at a tackle here, to be honest, like a Brady Christensen, but uh, we we do have to get a slot corner here. Aaron Robinson, to me, is a perfect fit. I want to see, want to make sure that the Lions didn't just go balls to the wall and get a slot corner, which I don't believe they did, and they didn't. They already got the linebacker role that they need really needed to be semi-filled. Aaron Robinson, to me, fits perfectly. You could talk about Sean Wade as well being a really good third-round addition, but this, to me, I mean, Aaron Robinson's really good in the run support game as well. With the fact that you don't have a bona fide starting beast at linebacker, I mean, Alex Anzalone is a good player, but I mean, I wouldn't put all my money down on him to be like the best linebacker in the league. You want a guy who could be really good in run support and coverage. Aaron Robinson's able to just relax. You can have him for a while. Elijah Molden's good, but again, I have have Elijah Molden a lot higher than Aaron Robinson, but you do need some type of enforcer on this team in a very, very run-heavy division. And then again, with Aaron Rodgers, it doesn't matter how good your damn coverage is. I think Aaron Robinson's going to have a better impact in this division. It's one of my dream fits, to be honest. I love Aaron Robinson to this team. If Christian Barmore were there, we could have different discussions. But the Giants are on the board. A sneaky pick at this spot could be Travis Etienne. I'm not going to lie. I, I could see it happening. I could see uh, New York saying, we'll, we'll get two running backs in here, given how injury-prone Saquon is, because Etienne deserves to be this pick. Given that fact, I actually might trade down here. Because we don't have a good edge for us to select at this moment. Obviously, there are some really good ones. I love Joseph Asai, by the way. But I don't really know if he fits this scheme. Uh, He could. And we could use him as a pass rusher off the edge. But I don't know. I think that there's another team that's more trying to win right now. Right now than anything. I also have Elijah Moore on the board who should be going to a team that needs a slot. I'm going to look at the Jaguars right here for a potential target there. And I think that the I think the Cardinals are going to make a big move here. The Cardinals, I mean, they do need another running back. I don't trust Chase Edmonds to be the longest term answer. So I am going to be moving up and we don't have a third round pick. So we're going to be giving up future draft capital. We're going to give up a next year third. And then honestly, a next we're going to give up um, a this year fifth as well. We're going to have to do it, guys, because um, we're going to be competing with the Jaguars who are also trying to move up the Steelers who are trying to move up as well. We're going to be giving a big package to move up. Uh, and we have to coerce the Giants and being able to move down, potentially losing out on guys like uh, potentially Pat Fryermuth, Rondale Moore, Ronnie Perkins, Joseph Asai. 
you have to coerce him out of it. But Travis Etienne falling to 42 is the best thing that's happened to the to the uh, Cardinals. And I think the NFL might be a little bit lower on Etienne, given the fact that he had a pretty poor three-cone time as well as shuttle. So, I mean, his change of direction, we've already known him as a home run threat. So, I mean, he kind of fits the mold there. With the, with the 49ers still having their second-round pick, so good job to you guys. Uh, you got, of course, your franchise guy in um, Justin Fields. Now it might be a good time to address the offensive line, if we're going to be honest. You know, we already signed our star left tackle. You know, we could get Creed Humphrey here. This is where I could use him as a second round. I think he's a third round guard, but you can have him slide. I mean, if it's a perfect fit here, honestly, for San Fran, you can use him as a guard, which means I'm okay with it in the second. Cornerback, again, that's another position where you guys should address. This could be a good spot to trade back, though. I'm not going to lie. This could be a good spot to trade back a little bit. There still is Elijah Moore on the board. You still have some really good pass rushers on the board. So I'm looking at teams that run a 3-4. And I'm looking at the Jaguars to move up just for Elijah Moore right here. Because, again, your guys is – apparently LaVisca Chanel played on the outside. That should That's my fault for not actually watching your games. You could also talk about um, the Titans, who I think they got Rashad Bateman. Uh, they didn't. They moved up for Greg Newsome. That's actually a pretty good move. But we're actually going to make a micro jump here with the uh with the jaguars because again it's not gonna be a very big jump at all but it's it's worth it it's worth it so the niners are moving back what two spots but we're gonna try to acquire a couple more picks um i don't know did they actually did they not have that third round oh they might have a did they trade their compensatory third you guys gotta let me know on that one we're gonna send in maybe a next year pick given the fact they don't have that many next year picks we're gonna see if a next year five is gonna be able to put it through a next year six would um it is only two spots so we're gonna put it in next year sixth to move up a couple spots again niners you're not gonna have too many picks in the next years so elijah moore is gonna be the pick though really really talented wide receiver he's gonna be your slot wide receiver i was thinking about trying to trade up with miami there as well but elijah moore beast i don't think the niners and in the um dolphins are really gonna be going at it with each other so at this pick i'm looking at levi and rike because we already solved our safety issue Got like DeMonte KZ and shit. So I think we're fine. We can honestly go. We we do run a 4-3 though. That's the most irritating thing. Why are we running four threes, guys? Um, if we do that, then if we are in like a hybrid scheme, actually, Dan Quinn is running the defense now. So he does have guys. I mean, we've seen Dante Fowler Jr. uh go there. We've also seen, I'm forgetting the one bus name. Um, he had one really good year. It's not Dante Fowler. Shoot, I'm bugging right now, but he had like a 15 sack season. You guys know who he is. He went to the Titans and then he went to the Raiders and was just a complete, complete no no. Given that, I think this would be a pretty good pick. You know, Joseph Asai or else Ronnie Perkins wouldn't be bad, especially since we're losing out on a guy uh, like Sean Lee potentially retiring. I don't know if he has retired officially yet, but that might be a really good way to compensate for it. You can have Jalen Smith as well as Leighton Van Der Esch in the middle, and then you can have pass rushers on the outside. And to me, I'm looking at Joseph Asai, and he's from Texas. Uh, we're going to do it. You guys might not like this, but I think the depth at interior defensive line is pretty good. So let's rock with Joseph Asai here. Big fan of his potential. Now, at this next pick, I mean, again, you guys have to correct me on that. If I got that wrong, then obviously next mock draft, we're going to be fixing that. But the Niners are sitting here, and uh, this is where I can see a corner. I could see it. You know, we could definitely do that again. We could go for a slot corner here. You get, I mean, you guys do say like, Oh, not in the second round, blah, blah, blah. Um, you guys might need to, you know, a Kello withers. It's not a Kello Witherspoon. You brought back K one Williams as your slot, but your head scout has said like, dude, he has injury problems, man. He has injury problems. He's on a one year deal. Uh, he's not that young. I think he's like 28 or something. So I think that Elijah Molden could be a really good pick here. And he fits what the Niners are looking for. Someone who could also play safety if you guys really want to. I know you guys brought back like Jaquaski Tart. So Elijah Molden, to me, big fan of him on this team. And the Patriots are sitting here on the board. And man, to be honest, I could see a Rondell Moore or Amari Rogers here. Uh, definitely still an option. We could look at the cornerback route, though. We could look at a guy like Tyson Campbell here. I know that Belichick loves his corners, who are definitely really good in man. Tyson Campbell's perfect for that. And we've already heard rumors of trades for Stefan Gilmore. And that's been going on for a while. He's also getting up there in age. 
He's also coming up on the last year of his contract. So there's, I mean, JC Jackson also is gone after the next year. We could definitely see this. And I think I've heard that the NFL is actually pretty damn high on Tyson Campbell. So to keep it realistic with what the NFL actually does, we're going to go Tyson here. You guys might not see that coming, but I mean, they've drafted cornerback in years, par- years prior. And, you know, they some of them haven't really panned out fully. But JC Jackson is somebody they're probably going to try to keep long term. Don't know if they can. I know one of those two corners is going to be gone, though. One of the two are going to be gone. Tyson Campbell is going to be that solution. Chargers are sitting here on the board. And to be honest, we could look at an, another interior offensive lineman here, like a Creed Humphrey, to play a guard or a Trey Smith. I know one of, I know my guy, um, my guy Francisco hates the idea of Trey Smith on the squad. I love it. I absolutely love it. But that's something where I would probably try to trade back for it. Safety wise, we could get a guy like Richie Grant. I know that I'm pretty sure we brought in somebody um, to play for us at safety, but we did not. So Michael Davis was the only guy that we brought back. We've also lost corner depth too. So if we want to go another corner. We definitely could. I could see an Asante Samuel being a pretty good on this squad. Um, that honestly might be my sneaky pick right here. That wouldn't be a bad idea, guys. Tell me what you think about that because I'm about to pull the trigger on it. Safety-wise, we could use something because, again, this year outerly not hitting too hot. But, man, I'm actually liking this idea of Asante Samuel Jr. on the outside uh, for the Chargers. I mean, they're running the Ram scheme, and Asante Samuel, he feels like a, he feels like a Ram, like a last-year Ram. That mentality, that grit, the power, just like that mentality is wonderful to me. I love it. Screw it. We're going to go Asante Samuel there. Running on cor- corners as well. I didn't. Re- I haven't even realized this. Guys, to be honest, I don't even think about um, like where or like what my previous pick was. I just go with the flow. But big fan of Asante Samuel there. Uh, with, the, with the Raiders on the board, we actually went Tevin Jenkins in the first. This is a great spot. Not corner. Don't worry. We're not going another corner. This is a great spot to go after a linebacker. Someone who can blitz and somebody who can cover. And I'm looking at Jameen Davis as someone who can cover really well. You want a blitzing linebacker, though. I could see this being a chess rod. I know you guys like going after your guy at your pick, but we could also try to get a slot corner in Javon Holland who can also play safety. That might be my move because of the fact that chess rod probably will fall due to his age. We're going to get Javon Holland here, guys. Uh, definitely someone who can play that free safety-esque role slash slot corner that you guys desperately need. Then we can get our uh, Sam linebacker in the next round. Next with the with the Giants, we're back on the board. I mean, I could see us trying to go after an edge here, like a Ronnie Perkins. That wouldn't be a bad idea. I remember you guys got Lorenzo Carter a couple of years ago, and I don't know if you guys run the same scheme, but you guys are investing pretty heavily in your defense. Tight end, not a need anymore. Linebacker, something we could address 100%. And I want to make sure the Giants haven't brought in anybody um, on the edge, but, I mean, Ryan Anderson, to me, that's, to, that's a 3-4 defensive end. So I'm not seeing anybody as an outside linebacker. Reggie Radiclin was a good deal. But you guys are trying to invest pretty heavily on your team this year. Let's get an actual pass rusher to come in, and let's get Ronnie Perkins. That would be pretty good for me. Uh, something to not target in the first, but something to target here. And you look at him, he still has the weight. He's still 251. He can put his hand in the dirt if you want him to. Uh, has around like 4'6 speed, 4'7 speed. So uh, that's perfectly fine for what the Giants are looking for. Big fan of Ronnie Perkins. Next with the, uh, with the, why am I bugging on the freaking uh, Dolphins name? We, we need to look at, I mean, your team's actually pretty damn stacked. I'm not going to lie. I don't really like, I want you guys to check this out with me. I want to see what you guys have at safety. This is one thing I've never been able to actually fully grasp is why we are actually putting safety as a need on the sheet. So bear with me as we try to check this out. Actually safety is at the bottom of the list. So, my dumbass. Um, so we got Fendulum here. We got uh, Brandon Jones. Why is safety not a bigger need? That's a question that I'm asking you, Dolphins fans. Why is it not something that we're addressing? Because that's something that's really confusing to me. I'm trying to see if they have like free safety or strong safety as a little category here. I know we have all these amazing defensive backs. Look at this. Nick Needham. Jamal Perry is pretty solid too. Um, Justin Coleman, not bad either. Noah Igbenogany, he's going to be a stud, man. I love Noah, Noah Igbenogany. Bobby McCain, Zaven ha- Howard, and then Byron Jones. You have all these guys who are really good, but they're not playing safety. If I'm not mistaken. Where the hell are the safeties? And then again, you could use another interior, um, interior linebacker. That wouldn't be a bad choice, especially since you guys run, I believe, a 3-4. Uh, you guys might run a 3-4, a 4-3 hybrid. You got Jerome Baker there, and then 
you got Bernard McKinney, but I don't see any other inside linebackers here. And to me, that's a, that might be that might be worth trying to send a pick that way. Looking again, we can actually check out the wide receivers that we now have drafted Jamar Chase on this squad. We now have Jakeem Grant, Devontae Parker, Will Fuller. Uh, I thought Alan Hearns is gone, but I'm not sure. Preston Williams, then now Jamar Chase. That's a pretty good roster. Would I would probably be looking towards um, Elijah Moore if that were the pick. Honestly, I'm down to Baron Browning as well. I mean, we could even look at a Rondell Moore here. That'd be quite scary. Uh, or else we're going to go Baron Browning or Jameen Davis. So let me know what you guys would do here. We could even go Pat Fryermuth. I know you guys like to run some uh, 12 personnel. And Gasicki just ain't. He's not really an actual tight end. But it, it's a tough one, guys. It's a real tough one. Jameen Davis might be my pick here. He's a really good guy in coverage, and he feels like a dolphin. Again, you guys do have some – you do have the knack to be able to select some really good linebackers. I'm going to check one thing, and that is what you have at uh, interior defensive linemen. I want to see where your D tackles are looking. And you got you got some dudes. You got Raekwon Davis and uh, Christian Wilkins. So I'm, I'm going to be sticking off that train. This is a tough one, guys. This is a tough one for me because I want to be pulling a trigger on one of these dudes and have just a big name like a Rondell Moore on your team. We're going to go Baron Browning, though, because, um, again, I feel like he was like a Patriot. Oh, Jameen Davis, though. I have Jameen Davis higher. We're going to go Jameen. Uh, it, it was a tough one. That's a tough decision for me. Really is because, I mean, we we obviously couldn't get the tackle that we really wanted, but now the Dolphins are going to be able to develop their tackles, and we'll just see what, what works from there. I really just, I mean, I can't be pulling a trigger on a Brady Christensen. I need something that's guaranteed for me to actually want to kick, like Robert Hunt in back to guard and stuff and totally screw up the Lions, um, the Lions capabilities. So, Next, we got the Washington football team, and we need to get slot corner desperately. Fortunately, there's not really a good option here. We could look at Sean Wade as well. I mean, if Javon Holland were on the board, I'd look at that. We need a single high safety. Uh, you guys talked about it. We need a single high safety. We already got pretty much our slot corner as well in, um, in JOK. So getting your single high safety could be a good priority here. Richie Grant has that range. He has that playmaking ability to be your single high safety. To me, that's a big plus, and it's something that we got to do. You don't let that pass up on you, especially with teams that don't have um, that don't have safeties. Like, I mean, Malik Hooker's off the he's off the Colts now, which is really depressing to me. But it is what it is. With the Bears on the board, though, um, I, I actually want to look at that Jamar Johnson safety. But the Bears on the board, we might need to go tackle here. We might need to go Leatherwood, given the fact that we could use him at guard as well. So it wouldn't be a horrible idea just to get the versatility out of a guy like Leatherwood uh, next round. I mean, we could go Brady Christian here, Christensen here, but I mean, I I'm not willing to thrust him into that lineup. I just can't, I can't do that. Alex Leatherwood to me has to be this pick. That's where he's going to fall, especially with his testing numbers and knowing that the uh, Titans were on next. You just, you have to pull that trigger there. Titans are going to get Rondell Moore here. You know, it's uh it's just like where the NFL NFL is going to value him probably higher than this. But you just you have to rock with that. You got your corner. Now you can get your slot weapon in Rondale Moore. With the Colts on the board, I mean, I think this one you could go, you could go wide receiver, you could go corner. With the way that um that Amon Ra played, I mean, tested tested numbers wise, he's gonna fall. So it could be a third round target for us now, which is wonderful. Could be a trade back spot as well. I would probably try to still get some youth there in that corner core. I would look at a Paulson Adebo as a really good one. Ifyatu Melifonwu, another really good potential first round uh, cornerback, especially for the cover two scheme. And Ifyatu running in the four fours, he doesn't play at it, but we're going to select him here again. I'm a big fan of him. Uh, Paulson Adebo is a stud as well. Speaking of a team that could be taking him, Paulson Adebo could be here to the Steelers. We missed out on running back. We still could get some extra help on the edge. Obviously, we already saw um, Ronnie Perkins and Joseph Side go. I would not be selecting Joe Trine if I were a Steeler fan right now. Um, I'm going to be honest. We could go interior defensive line if we wanted to. This is a tough spot for me. We could go Pat Fryermuth too. It would be a bad option. Eric Ebron is only there for one more year, and he kind of could feel like a Steeler. We do need to – we lost our number two corner, though. This is more of a need pick than anything. We might trade back here because I don't see a team that could use another zone corner for a little bit. Apparently the Browns are in talks with Caleb Farley. Don't think that's going to be legit. Uh, we could look at, I mean, the saints aren't going to be going after a zone corner like Paulson Adebo. We could see that right here though. 
So let's see if any of those teams want to move up. We, I mean, if we could do interdivisional trades, I'd probably try to go for a team that wants Brevin Jordan. And honestly, you guys are going to hate. I know some of you guys hate this, but I'm going to be straight up honest with you guys. Don't really care too much. I had a discussion with one of my fans last time. The Rams are moving up and they're going to be selecting Brevin Jordan. I know you guys probably need some line, and that's something I always am a huge proponent of. Uh, The Steelers have a lot of holes, too, so we might be sending a next-year pick thinking they're going to be like, oh, well, we're going to send in and we're going to try to swap uh, picks. We're actually not. Uh, Next-year fifth, they move up a couple spots because of the fact that they're both contenders. That's pretty much – the Steelers declined that. Wow. Um, That's quite surprising. So we're going to put in the seventh and ask for the Steelers' seventh in return. We're going to see if that actually can change the turn the tides of anything, which makes no sense because the Steelers will probably finish worse than the Rams. But you guys got a better deal out of it, right? Uh, we're going to be looking at Brevin Jordan here. And to me, that's going to be the pick. He's a perfect replacement of Gerald Everett. I know we need linemen so badly, but at this point, you really just, you can't lose a target like Brevin, I mean, a target like Gerald Everett and just be like, okay, you know, I'm not a fan of the tight ends that we have there right now. I'm going to be honest. So Brevin Jordan, to me, he's a top 20 player in my class. So that's uh, that's another factor there. But big fan of him. Big fan of him overall. So for uh, for the Seahawks, this could be a good spot to take a defensive uh, defensive player. Joe Tryon, to me, feels like he could be a Seahawk. I can see it. I can see him in a Seahawks uni. Just get some extra extra um, defensive prowess right there. I could see a cornerback as well. But that that's a big one. For right here, this is a tough one. If I were the Steelers, honestly, I'd wait on a corner, given the fact that I really, really like Keith Taylor Jr. And I'd possibly trade up for a Keith Taylor Jr. Running back, we missed out. We missed out on the market. Michael Carter's not going to be our answer. All right. Kenneth Gainwell could be in a later round. You even look at a Jarrett Patterson. But this could be a good spot for a cornerback. Again, I said that Keith Taylor is going to be a better option later on. Paul Sandebo could be a really good target here. Uh, this is going to be a weird one, guys. I want to check what the Steelers have done in free agency because I'm pretty sure they've done jack shit. Um, yeah, they've done absolutely nothing. So Zach Banner, woohoo, and then BJ Finney. I'm very happy that we brought those both back, but we do need a – we lost a starting corner. That's going to be our next round pick. I keep saying that. Uh, we don't really have too much of the tight end room. We got Zach Gentry like a couple years ago, and he's been garbage. You know, um, Vance is getting old. And then Pat Fryman is still on the board. Let's get it. Let's get it. Fuck it, Steelers fans. We're trying to win right now. We need to get another Heath Miller in here, guys. Pat Fryman, to me, could definitely be the next Heath Miller for this squad, especially with, like, all the – I mean, we don't even know if Chase Claypool is going to get charges pressed on him for, like, beating the shit out of somebody in a bar fight. But, you know, we're stealing him from the, the, the Ravens. That's another thing. I mean, I'm pretty sure the Cowboys went with um, – they went with CeeDee Lamb because they didn't want the Eagles to get him. Now the the Bears, God, the Steelers are going with Pat Vermeer so that they don't have to face him twice a year. And plus, it's a really good option for Ben. I mean, if you really want any quarterback, might want to check down to a monster like Pat Vermeer. And he's a Steeler too; he can block really well. So with um with not being able to score on a running back, we score on a really good tight end. And the Ravens are sitting here and they're like, shoot, we kind of missed out, right? Uh, edge wise. Don't really think there's anything here that we'd probably rock right now. Camp Sample is a really good third rounder, in my opinion. So this is another good – this is a good spot to trade out of, guys. Really good spot to trade out of. We missed out on that um, edge train. And what what did we go earlier? Went Terrace Marshall. We missed on the edge train. Let's get out of here. There's still guys like Jabril Cox, Brady Christensen on the board. Uh, we're going to just move at, back a little bit. There's also Levi on Ruzarike on the board. We're going to move out a little bit, just a little bit, as the Panthers are moving back up. They had a big offer, I believe, to move back with the cards. Now they're going to be giving a big offer to move up with the Ravens. So we're going to be selecting our tackle at this spot. Uh, We're going to try to offer maybe a fifth-round pick. We'll see if a sixth goes through, and now we're going to offer a fifth. I think that would be good. If you're going to offer a sixth, and we're going to try to compete with teams trying to move up, you got to make a really good offer. And now we're going to get Brady Christensen. So, unfortunately, we didn't get one BYU product that we wanted, but we got another one. And the Browns are sitting here, and we already got Edge. Levi Onwuzurike is on the board, and there's no doubt in my mind that we're going to go him. He's just an absolute animal in the middle. Yeah, Sheldon Richardson, I think, is on a one-year left on his deal. So, at least get some prowess in that middle. Good job to them. Uh, Saints, you got to go corner here, dude. you gotta get a, you got to get a man corner. Um, I, hate, I hate Kelvin Joseph. I'm not going to lie. 
Uh, we could see a guy like Trill Williams sneaking up in this draft. He, he tested really well in like the lower four fours. I can see that happening. I can see them trading out because they need to get two corners in this draft, though. Because, uh, I mean, Marshawn Lattimore might be arrested. He might be released as well, which is very, very unfortunate. So looking at teams that could use a new center, do the Ravens even have a center left? I don't know if they have a center because we actually might be uh, trying to move back up one spot. Let's see. Let's see if we can see uh, what the Ravens are having at center because I might just totally be out of my depth here and then totally forget. Also, we got the fan on again, so woohoo. But yeah, Greg Mance, oh my God, we have absolutely nothing. So I guess it's a little bit of um, a little bit against my own sight there, but we're going to move up one spot with the Ravens. We just traded back. We're going to trade back up with the Ravens. Um, Saints, you guys need all the help you guys can get. We're going to we're gonna trade our later seventh as well as this pick, or later fifth, which is quite surprising that we can't even trade up with that. We're not going to do that. That's some bullshit. I'm not going to trade back and then trade back up one spot. Uh, there is a guy like Amari Rogers on the board, and I know some teams desperately probably want him at this point. I can look at the Patriots and move back up. James Hudson's on the board. Uh, you know what? We can see the Packers moving up. Let's see. What do the Packers go in there first? They went Zayvon Collins. They still need a right tackle. And James Hudson can make that switch to right tackle if you guys really want him to. Jackson Carmen as well. Uh, James Hudson might be a little bit too good to pass up on. You could see the Chiefs make another move for another tackle. Not very not very realistic there. Um, looking at other guys that people can move up for. Let's see the best guys on the board because, again, most of the time people will go for the best player on the board. You got Baron Browning here. You still have Creed Humphrey, Landon Dickerson. Landon Dickerson's a beast, by the way. I should have probably went that with the Steelers, but we're not going to be doing that. Uh, that that's a little bit too unrealistic. I was about to trade back up with the Steelers, but um, teams that could use a center. That's a, that's a big question right now. Uh, the chiefs could definitely use it. We're not doing that again though. Um, shoot. Honestly, we might just have to go corner here. I think we're out of luck. Milton Williams is another guy I think could be going around the spot, but we're going to probably go with this corner route and they're going to, they're going to mess up, man. They're going to get Kelvin Joseph here. I think the NFL is just a little bit too high on somebody who's not very great but the Saints are going to take a shot on him. He's young. That's all I can say. He's young. And the Ravens are sitting here, and they got nothing at center. Now they, they, now they do. Uh, Land Dickerson, to me, is perfect for this, for the fit. He's, he's used to a heavy run offense with being able to protect his quarterback very well. Has a great personality. I love it. I love the fit. The Packers are sitting there, and they're going to get a tackle. You know, Spencer Brown's the only right tackle left, so that's something that we could probably try to target here. But I think ja James Hudson, the NFL is actually pretty high on him, as well as Jackson Carmen. We're going to be rocking James Hudson here. And I think we're going to be switching him to right tackle because we got to protect Aaron Rodgers. At least show him that you actually give a shit as the light starts to dim out. Wonderful, right? Um, the Chiefs are on the board, though. We got to get a linebacker here. Uh, Baron Browning's on the board. Jabril Cox is on the board. I'm a bigger fan of Jabril Cox in this game. Definitely get that, uh, get that out of the way. Let's rock Jabril Cox. And then finally... Ending off the second round is, of course, we got the Bucks. So this is um this interesting spot. We could just try to replace. Uh, we could just go boogie bash here to replace JPP, get some more defensive line help, line depth. We could also get an offensive tackle here, like a Jackson Carmen to develop and eventually replace our uh, our left tackle. Wouldn't be a bad idea, but to me, I'm gonna be going boogie here, just crushing the dreams of my Bills fans out there. Uh, he's definitely worth this pick. Absolute stud. He's going to be a perfect replacement for JPP when he retires. This team's going best player available, and Boogie Basham could be the best on the board. So let me know what you guys think. We are going to be doing a round three because I'm very excited to do it. I'll see you guys on the far side. Peace.